seriously pooped. This stuff's a lot harder when you don't have a badge to flash. I walked around all day and didn't hear anything good. It was the same for me. There was absolutely no talk about the case whatsoever, let alone the troop culprit. Ditto for me. Actually, in my case, I kept getting bombarded with questions and couldn't get them onto the main subject at all. <sighs> the killer must be pretty good to have pulled this off without being seen by anyone in this small town. What should we do? Well... One steak bowl, please! That's not what I meant. But then again, I guess we might as well take a break. I'll have a crab and egg fried rice. I'll have roast pork ramen with extra noodles. Oh, now that our tummies are full, let's share what we learned, even if it wasn't much. So, to sum up, there really was no new information. The end? The police had an unusually large number of officers in their initial investigation of the first two incidents. To find facts that even they overlooked would be difficult indeed, now that over half a year has passed. There wasn't a single report of suspicious persons being witnessed to begin with. Miss Yamano had ardent fans, whereas Saki-san didn't. But otherwise, the conditions are the same. You know, every time I tried to ask about the case, everyone ignored me and kept ranting about the damn fog. Yeah, that or the Midnight Channel. I asked around about Teddy, too, but no one's seen him. Gee, I wonder where he could have gone. Do you have anything, Naoto? Any new, uh, deductions? <sighs> Without any new data to work with, there isn't much I can do. But there must be someone in town who meets all the criteria for this case. The killer must have a connection to both Saki-san and Miss Yamano, as well as be in a position to observe our actions periodically to some extent. Finally, it must be someone who could approach Senpai's house without arousing suspicion. <sighs> I need some fresh air before I give it more thought. I'll be outside. It's snowing. No wonder it's chilly. Ugh, it's freezing out here. Maybe this will help clear my head and get my deductive muscles flexing. Hey, is it snowing? Too bad the fog's so thick. The snow just gets lost in it. What's the matter?
Huh? What about him? Detective Adachi. Hmm. A member of the police force. That is an interesting approach. It would certainly explain the lack of witness reports. It's the same reason no one ever reported seeing Namatame's truck. This is a small town, so everyone must have known who he is. And since he's a detective, people definitely wouldn't have thought of him as being suspicious. In fact, he could use his position to his advantage and hide critical information. Huh. Well, if you think of it that way, I guess it's possible. But we're talking about Adachi here, right? I mean, really? Adachi? He's your textbook lousy detective. Are we really on the right track here? Actually, regarding Detective Adachi, I'm not sure how to put it, but there's something that's been bothering me about him for some time now. Yeah? Hmm. Perhaps it's just my imagination, so I shouldn't speak to... It's cold. I think we've cooled down enough here. Let's go back in. Adachi-san? That can't be. I mean, he said he came to escort Ms. Yamano and... What? Was he at your inn when the announcer was staying there? When Miss Yamano was staying at our inn, the media were swarming all over it. That's when Adachi-san arrived, saying he'd been assigned to guard her. He told our waitress that fame could be rough. Guard her? He didn't spend the night there? Huh. I wonder if he knew Miss Yamano. I don't know about that, but I heard he did call out to a girl in my class. I found out this afternoon, but I thought, you know, that's just how cops are. So I didn't think it had anything to do with the case. Detective Adachi also questioned Saki-san, the one who found the announcer's body, on numerous occasions. I heard it was because there was so little information about the case at the time, but it's certainly unusual to question someone with as strong an alibi as hers multiple times. Then you think he had something else on his mind? And that something is what connects those two victims to Adachi-san? Come to think of it, we've been running into that guy a lot, in all sorts of places. And every time he'd tell us what the police were doing before saying, oops, I said too much and clamming up. Was that all to throw us off the trail? It would be no problem for him to drop that warning letter into your mailbox either. Not to mention the fact that he can destroy any evidence that might point to him. And is it really a duchy son? This is still only a tentative theory. We should work to confirm it as soon as possible. This is now Toshiragane. Something has occurred to me about the case, and I'd like to get Detective Adachi's input on it. Huh? The transport? It's right now? Right, I, I see. Thank you. What was that about a transport? Detective Adachi is headed to the hospital to prepare for Namatame's relocation. We must head there at once. guys doing here? Hey, do you know where Dojima-san went? They told me he snuck out of his room again. I assure you, we've made it clear to him several times that he needs to stay put, but he keeps going off on his own. Jeez, with Namatami finally relocated, I was looking forward to going home. So, he's been relocated. I've been wondering... You seem to be in a terrible hurry to get him out of this hospital. Huh? Oh, well, yeah. I mean, we can't leave him here with Dojima-san and Nanako-chan around. Didn't you guys think so, too? Hey, what are you doing here anyway? Nanako-chan's room is in the other wing. 
Don't you think you should leave before Dojima-san finds you? If he catches you, he'll start pestering you again. Adachi, where's Namatami? There's been a lot of noise today for some reason. Dojima-san, what are you doing here? Namatami's already been relocated. I was looking for you so I could tell you that. You did what? Who authorized that? There's still more I need to ask him about. C give me a break, Dojima-san. Those first two murders have been bothering me. His motives are shaky and his alibi is rock solid. We closed a lot of loopholes on the basis of his testimony. But that part's still nagging at me. Is this more of your detective's intuition? He's already been relocated. It's no use hassling me about it. And you kids should really get home too. You're gonna get in the way of police business. What's gotten into you today? It's odd to see you taking work so seriously. <laughs> Come on! I'm always given 110% when it comes to the job. You should get back to work too, Dojima-san. Your current assignment? Get better as soon as possible. Mm. What are you all doing here? We came to confirm something with Adachi-san. The time the announcer went missing? I can't say for sure offhand. It's not like I saw her or anything. That was months and months ago, too. My memory's kind of hazy that far back. Why wouldn't I question her? She discovered the announcer's body. But she didn't know much about it, so I only talked with her once or twice. Was that all you wanted to ask? Well, I hope it helped. Warning letter? The one that was delivered to his house. It's in police custody now, correct? Uh, I don't really remember. Hey, what do you mean you don't remember? I gave it to you to take down to the crime lab for processing. You're telling me you forgot? <laughs> I'm sorry. Your accident was right after that, and what with one thing and another, it sort of slipped my mind. Uh, besides, that thing was just a prank, wasn't it? Jeez, what are you asking me all this for? For crying out loud, what's this all supposed to be about? Dojima-san, you really need to get back to your bed. That's why your wounds aren't healing. And you all need to go home right now. Do you have any idea what time it is? I'm going back. I need to get to the station and report in. Just one more thing, please. We know for certain now that the first two murders weren't Namatame's doing. Someone else killed them. Adachi-san, do you have any idea who that might be? I have no idea what you're talking about. Cause we think it might have been you. What? That's ridiculous! We already know Namatami's the one who put them all in! What did you just say? Put them all in? What's this putting them in business? Do you know something about the method behind their murders? Don't tell me that all that talk about TVs and whatnot from before was... I see. Now I finally understand. To tell the truth, Adachi-san, I've been fixated on something you once said. Before, I didn't know why, only that it sounded a wrong note to me. Do you recall when I read Namatame's diary? at the scene of Dojima-san's accident. At the time, I said, even the victims who survived and were never released to the public are written here. And in response, your words were, wow, then that settles it. How, I wonder, would that settle anything? At the time, the police had no idea that there had been other attempted murders related to the case. You had no reason to say such a thing. After all, there are countless examples of people disappearing for a few days. Yet when I read the list of names, you raised no objection. Odd, that. What do you say to that, Detective Adachi? I don't know. I said I'm busy! Wait, you son of a bitch! 
Adachi! Ah, oh, damn it. Adachi! What the? I swear he ran this way. Damn it! Where the hell did he go? Did you find him? I contacted security. Nobody's seen Adachi, and there's no record of anyone leaving this area. So he must be still in this ward somewhere. He's still here? But we looked! We didn't find him anywhere! That bastard. <clears throat> Dojima-san, for heaven's sake, what are we going to do with you? Sorry. I got carried away. Do you even want to get better? If you keep this up, there could be lasting damages. Have you forgotten how much trouble it caused you last time? Y you're right. Sorry. You've got to find Adachi. I need to square this away with him. Please. He hasn't left this ward yet? I don't think he would, but could he have... Yeah, I think so. If he's the killer, he can go through, right? You mean he went in through here? We searched every inch in the direction he ran off. There's nowhere to hide. I don't think we could have missed him. He was cornered. It's highly probable that he escaped there. If he does indeed turn up on the other side, that should prove beyond a doubt that he is the true culprit. Damn. So I guess we were right. What do we do now? I think it's too dangerous to go in from here. We're not 100% positive he used this TV, and on top of that, we don't know where it might lead. Let's go in from Jeunesse, like always. It'll be fine. So long as we're ready for him, we'll crush that jerk in one strike. Where am I? Sensei? Why are you here? I see. How mysterious. There are so many things I don't know about. But I did realize something. I've been thinking all this time about who I really am. But I couldn't find the answer. I was no one from the start. Humans live in the other world, and shadows live in this world. From the beginning, that's all there was to it. I was just a shadow in that world. You're always so kind, Sensei. I figured something out. That day at the hospital, I realized that I really can't do anything. As soon as I thought that, I lost consciousness. Then when I woke up, I was inside the fog. Shadows can't stay in the human world. They aren't allowed. I walked and walked, but there was nothing all around me. Just when I started thinking that I couldn't go anywhere, 
I heard the noise of a car. And then I was here. I remember lots of things now. My world is a place shaped by human thoughts. One day, a shadow living in that world awakened to human emotions. But humans and shadows are completely different entities. So he made himself forget that he was a shadow. He wanted to forget. He wanted people to like him. And that's how he came to look like this. <laughs> I really am stupid. What the other Teddy said before, in the end, it was all true. No matter how much I search for myself, I have no self. There was no me to begin with. I'm just a shadow that took a different form so humans would like me. It would have been better if I had never remembered. But I did. I'll probably turn back to a regular shadow soon. Oh, yeah. Sensei, one day, when you meet Nana-chan in heaven, apologize for me. Tell her, I'm sorry I couldn't do anything. Tell her, I'm really sorry. Huh? Really? Nana Chance. Wow. That's wonderful. I'm so glad. Glad that I could at least hear that. <laughs> My heart feels so much lighter now. I'm starting to feel sleepy. What a strange place. It feels so soothing. It's not like my world. Something just feels so nostalgic about this place. Could this be your dream world, Sensei? Uh-huh. But I wonder why I met you here. What am I supposed to do now? But I don't know what to look for or how to find it. No matter how hard I think, there's too many things my little brain can't understand. But I do understand one thing now. I'm glad that I met you, Sensei. But I have to get going. This is your place. It doesn't seem like somewhere that I'd be allowed to stay. Goodbye, Sensei. It seems the words in your memory weren't the only things you summoned here. 
This is a room for guests who have an ego that can be nurtured. Shadows, mere fragments broken off from the ego, have no place here. The water's strength has moved a single stone that had stopped, returning it once again into the flow. Mmm, very interesting. Well now, it's about time we departed once again. This vehicle is still on its journey. There is no reason to tarry here for long. Margaret? We're ready to go. Let us depart. <laughs> ah, you are every inch the guest I had anticipated. Now, it's time for you to return. <laughs> I am even more intrigued now as to where this is all headed. We'll be waiting for your next visit. How did it go? Did you find Teddy? No, and no one's seen him either. Oh, that annoying little furball! Just when we're at a turning point in the case, too. We have no choice. Let's pursue Adachi for now. Whoa, look how dense this fog is. It's gotten even worse than before. What the? There's this malicious aura everywhere. It feels completely different from the last time I was here. I think we'd better hurry. Give me a sec to try finding Adachi. Does this mean both this world and ours are getting messed up? Our glasses work on the fog on the other side. It can't be normal. And I heard more people are falling ill because of the fog. I wonder what's going to happen. I sense him. Adachi's definitely in here. Are you serious? Which way? Hold on. So he did come to this side. Well, that settles it. There's virtually no doubt remaining that he's the true culprit. Once we capture him, solving the mystery of this world and the rest of the case can't be far behind. Then, maybe we'll find out where Teddy came from, too. Man, where is that bear anyway? Well, I can say for sure he's not here. And I know Adachi is here, but I can't track him down myself. Gee, Ted, why aren't you here when we need you most? This place... <sighs> I see. I came back. But it really doesn't matter. I'm completely useless. Nana-chan, I'm so sorry. Teddy? It is you, Teddy. I heard... your voice. You said... Hang in there. I heard my big bro and everyone else, too. <laughs> Nana-chan! Oh, hold on! I'll get the doctor! It seems she's asleep again. Um, Nana-chan told me that she heard my voice. She heard me say, hang in there. It could be that her frankly miraculous recovery was because everyone's voices reached her. Even unconscious, people are capable of hearing others' voices. My voice. And theirs too. Everyone. In any case, there are too many things we don't understand about her condition and what caused it. We're doing our best, but it's difficult when everything about her illness is a total unknown. Unknown? Well, if anything happens, Please send for me.
If I'm an unknown being, then the way I can change is unknown too. So all I have to do is make them not unknown. Nanachan's doing her best. Sensei and the others are probably fighting now too. I... I'm just a shadow. But Nanachan cheered up when she heard my voice. So what if I'm just a shadow? There must be something I can do. I can't just give up thinking about things. That's why I came back here. Right, Nanachan? Right. I need to get back to the others. Hang in there, Nana-chan. I'll be back soon. It's no use. I can only tell that Adachi is here, not his exact location. Rizichan! If only Teddy was with us. Didn't he say his nose is practically useless now? And could he even help us find that bastard? <laughs> nope. He'd be no help at all. But he was always there to support me whenever. That bear's a loud mouth, but he's nice to have around. He's always so full of energy. He's lighthearted and always optimistic. I'm alright. I just got a little dizzy. The fog's so dense, it's hard to see through it. Why don't we call it a day? It won't do us any good if you collapse. I agree. If Rise-san became fatigued, even if we found Adachi, our capacity in battle would be reduced. Moreover, it's almost nighttime. We should return to our world for the present. Damn it! We came so far to run smack into a dead end! I know he's in there, too. What's wrong with me? My powers are completely useless! Teddy? You little... where the hell were you? Uh, I'm sorry. You idiot! Bad bear! Bad! You're so late! Who do you think you are? <laughs> um... Rise-chan? Are you faking? No, stupid! S sorry I want to help you all again. You know how much trouble you caused, you dumb bear? Where the hell were you? I'm sorry. I figured out a lot of things. Stuff about me and that world. I wanted to tell you all. A shadow? You mean you're one of those things we've been fighting? Yup. Just like the ones you all know about. Shadows are suppressed human thoughts given form. Everyone has them inside. Wait. You say you're a shadow, but you didn't attack us. And you kept telling us from the start that you wanted to bring peace and quiet back to that world, right? But in the end, I was just an ordinary shadow. Nothing special about me at all. I did everything I could until now to try and make my world peaceful. But instead, the weird fog started seeping out into this world, too. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. If I really was special, then maybe... It's no big deal. I mean, we weren't expecting much from you in the first place. And about you being a shadow? We pretty much figured you were something like that anyway. Huh? 
what are you saying? Here I am pouring my heart out to you and you say you thought I was something like that anyways? No normal person would think such a pretty bear could really be a shadow. So what's the problem with being a shadow? It's true that you may have been born that way, but you now possess the power of persona. A shadow is suppressed power. Once controlled by the ego, it becomes a persona. Doesn't it follow then that you must have developed an ego? Whether the ego masters its shadow or the shadow awakens to its ego, the only difference I see is the order in which the process occurred. Oh, Teddy's practically human then. Uh, I'm the same as humans? You keep trying to figure out who you are, just like all of us here. You can't do much on your own. You really aren't that special. See? What's so different between you and us? of us were pretty much a group of misfits to begin with too, right? You fit right in, man. I beg your pardon? Who are you calling a misfit? Isn't that just you, senpai? Hey, that's not something a detective would say. Or an idol either. Geez, stop crying, will ya? Now's not the time for that. While you were gone, we figured out who murdered the announcer and senpai. It was Adachi. Huh? Adachi? That total goofball? Whoa! I didn't notice at all. Looks like I'm pretty blind to that sort of thing. Hmm. But you all know him. If you can't find someone like that, I don't think I can help you. Like I said, we're not expecting much from you. Well, the main thing is, it's hard to get pumped about this without someone nice and fuzzy around. Yeah, what Kanji said. Uh, okay. Thanks, guys. All right. Now that the band's back together, let's take it from the top. Starting tomorrow. It's been a while, but I'll do my best to look for him, too. Leave it to Fuzzy. give it a try, but if Risei-chan couldn't find him, I really doubt someone with a dried-up nose like me will be much help. Hmm. 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 I do smell a Dachi baby in here, but the fog is completely covering up his scent. Teddy, you can't do it either? When you look at me with those eyes, I get this feeling. I've got to sniff him out no matter what. This is my time to shine. <clears throat> oh, I'm getting something. <clears throat> Teddy? Hey, quit wandering around. You better not flake out on us again. I sense it from this away. Is it Itachi? Um, how do I put it? It's kind of hazy, but at the same time, it feels like I've got a whopper on the line. I don't get it. Very suspicious. This definitely smells, but that's weird. 
If I remember right, that's where Sensei, Yosuke, and Chie-chan came from when I met them for the first time. When we first... where was that? Oh, you mean that creepy-ass room where all the faces on the posters were cut out? Yep, there's someone there! Teddy, you really are amazing! It was just dumb luck. It's because that's where I first sensed Sensei and the others. That's why it kind of smelled over there. Oh, I see. Wait, did you say it smelled? Wasn't that the room where Yosuke had to go to the bathroom and... Huh? You're saying he beat his pants there? Oh, I don't want to hear it. Oh, you lie so bad. Dude, I did not piss my pants. Chie, quit spreading random rumors about stuff like that. Uh, well, it happened so long ago, my memory's kind of fuzzy, you know? Okay, guys, enough fuzziness. Follow me, the master of fuzzy logic. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard you crack up in a while, Yukiko. Though I really wonder sometimes about your sense of humor. I noticed her first, and she just had to run off and have an affair. Who's there? Oh, it's you guys. You're very persistent. I don't know what you're talking about. You're not lying your way out of this one, damn it! Just being here proves it! Answer us! You're the one who threw Ms. Yamano into the TV, aren't you? It was an accident. She started struggling. What else was I supposed to do? I called her out to the lobby because I wanted to ask her something, and then she started getting hysterical on me. Who are you? And what's this something important you called me out here for? What they say on the news isn't true, is it? All that talk about you having an affair and whatnot, it's all a lie, right? Why do I have to explain myself to you? I see. So you don't deny it. You caught my eye. But it turns out you're another worthless bitch. What's wrong with you? <laughs> don't make me call for help. <sighs> shut up, shut up, shut up. I think you need to see what it's like to fear for your life. It'll get your head straight. <laughs> what are you going to do? No! Ah! She, she fell in. <laughs> wow! So people can go completely inside! Good thing for me no one else was around there in the middle of the night. That... happened in our lobby? I learned about the Midnight Channel through some rumor. You hear a lot of fishy stories like that on the Force. But it was pure coincidence that I touched the screen and discovered my power. I burst out laughing when I found out. I knew right away that this was going to be interesting. So you tested it out on Mayumi Yamano? Nah, it was nothing like that. I'm a very sincere fellow. I was just trying to punish the stupid bitch a little for betraying me. Yeah, putting them inside the TV was never the plan. But you know, both Mayumi and that dippy high school girl struggled for no reason. Then you were responsible for Saki-senpai's death! Saki? Oh yeah, her name was Saki Konishi, or something like that. At first I just called her in because of work-related stuff, her being the one who found Mayumi's body and all. And naturally, if there was any chance she'd seen something, I'd need to know, right? 
So I was all set to be a nice guy to her. And then that bitch. What's this about anyways? Didn't you call me in for more questions? Well, we'll get to that. But you know, I saw you this afternoon. You were getting pretty cozy with that Namatame. Huh? So I'm not good enough for you? Well, I know how to deal with girls like you! These high school girls today. This world's gone straight to shit. When I was in school, I wasn't allowed to do anything but study my ass off. I was supposed to be the best of the best, and instead they stick me in the boonies. But I guess I got the sweet power to make up for it. <laughs> Life's not so bad after all. Get on your knees and beg, and maybe I'll let you out. <laughs> yeah, like that'll happen. <laughs> As if I'd walk into a death trap like that. It was a lot easier the second time. High school girls are thinner, you know? Lighter. You son of a bitch! Come on, give me a break. I didn't know it was dangerous inside the TV. It's not like I was trying to kill them. I mean, I'm sure they hit on Namatame, not the other way around. The council secretary will one day rise to public office himself. Mayumi and that high schooler were just gold digging. They got exactly what they deserved. I didn't do anything wrong at all. Shut the hell up! You knew from what happened to Mayumi Yamano that people die in here! <sighs> so what if I knew? Nah, he called the police in the middle of the night, just after they found that Saki girl's body. The rest of the force had their hands full with the double homicide, and it happened that I was the one who took the call. Namatame said the police refused to take him seriously. You were responsible for that then. Oh, quite the contrary. If anyone else had taken the call, sure. But I actually did believe him, you know. That's the pattern to the two deaths so far? And now you're seeing a girl in a kimono on that weird program, and you think she'll die too, is that right? Namatame-san, do you seriously expect us to believe something like that? But... but it's true! If there's any way the police can protect her... Listen, there's no way the police are going to make a move based on a fantasy story like that. <laughs> it does sound interesting, though. B but Oh, I have an idea. If you really want to save her that much, why not do it yourself? Like, you could shelter her somewhere. Some place where no one could find her. Where no one could find her? Save her yourself. You can do it. I'm busy, so I'm hanging up now. Bye. Isn't that amazing? Of all the people who could have received Namatami's call, it ended up being me. Talk about luck! All I did was give him a little push. And he completely bought into his vision of this world. The more people you guys saved, the more he'd kidnap. Both sides had the best of intentions, so the game of cat and mouse would never end. <laughs> it was awesome. You gotta be shitting me! Why? What reasons could you have for doing that? <laughs> reasons? None, really. I could do it, that's all. And it was fun. I guess that's my reason? You murdered people just for the fun of it?! Come on, all I did was put people in here. I didn't murder them. And Namatame did most of it. I had nothing to do with any of you. You're just dodging the blame! Yeah? Then how would you prove it? He put people inside TVs? <laughs> you think the police are that stupid? What a jerkwad! I do admit, though, I never thought you guys would manage to track me down. 
I like that. Games like this gotta have surprises or they get boring fast. It's like when I dealt with that Kubo kid. That was fun too. Then, you mean to say that Mitsuo Kubo's disappearance was your doing as well? I did sense something odd in his course of action. If he had special powers and wanted attention, why resort to a regular copycat crime? But that wasn't the case. Kubo had no such powers. In fact, he was thrown in by you. Am I correct? It had been a while since I last put someone inside the TV, so I really got a kick out of that one. Why did you do that? And how come Mitsuo didn't say anything about you? <laughs> you think that didn't occur to me before I did it? Come on, I'm a detective. I led him through to a room at the station with the TV, switched off the lights, and did it quick while he was still startled. As long as he didn't see me push him in and no one else did either, no one would believe him, even if he survived. Of course, I don't think the Kubo kid ever figured out what happened. <laughs> Wait, the police station? Yeah. He turned himself in pretty quick, actually. This was back when we didn't even know enough to issue a search warrant. But the other officers decided it was just a prank, so they pawned him off on me. I didn't blame them. I mean, a kid coming and saying, I did it all! It was me! Who'd believe him? But it looked bad. I didn't think anyone would come forward and take the blame for all the incidents. The police were desperate to pin it on anyone. If this kid really did it, they might have announced the case was closed. And if that happened, Namatame would stop saving people. I couldn't let that happen, or the game would be over. That's why I told the others I sent him home. I came up with the idea to put him inside the TV on the spot. The game would be over? You threw him in just so your fun wouldn't end? You gotta have some excitement in life, don't you agree? But then you guys put your foot in it yet again and ruined my fun. Thanks to you, Kubo was arrested again, and everyone acted like he was the true culprit behind it all. <sighs> Couldn't they see how badly he copied the crime scene? It worked out in the end, though, because good old Namatame kept saving people. I guess the guy started to develop some kind of messiah complex, huh? <laughs> what an idiot. This is all a game to you. How dare you murder people? Murder Saki-senpai for such a stupid reason! You bastard! I'll never forgive you! You can keep your forgiveness. Our world will probably become just like this place soon enough anyways. Didn't you notice? The fog's leaking out. Everything on that side's pretty much screwed. The two worlds will merge soon, and then there'll be no difference. No sides anymore. What the hell's he talking about? This isn't his real body. The real Adachi is somewhere else. But this guy feels different from an ordinary shadow. It doesn't seem like he's going berserk. <laughs> wow, you can tell that much? This me is just around to greet you guys, and thank you for wasting your time by chasing me in here. I'd say this world has taken a real shine to me. I feel like it's giving me everything I've ever wanted. And the monsters don't attack me at all. Maybe they can tell we have the same goal. The Shadow's goal? By the end of the year, Inaba will disappear completely into the fog. Soon, this place will be reality. I'll be in this world, so if you want me, come and get me. This world has a mind of its own. We'll see which of us it favors. Keep your bullshit to yourself! It's about time you shut the hell up! We'll finish this right now! What a chump! Didn't I just tell you the real me is somewhere else? I'll be expecting you all. We'll put an end to this. Get back here, you! That stuff about the world's mind and how this place will become our reality. Was he serious? The rest of his confessions were consistent. We'd best proceed under the assumption that it's no lie. It felt like he's gained some strong power after coming here. Not only that, maybe he got taken over by that power. So what he said about the two worlds becoming one, that's really gonna happen? D 
didn't he say that it would happen by the end of this year? What happens then? I think he means this world will engulf the human world. The people in town are acting weird. It's like when the shadows that emerged from people went berserk. If the fog gets even thicker, and this town is completely shut off from the outside world, then the other side might become full of shadows, like over here. You mean everyone's going to turn into shadows? Damn it! Damn that bastard! Why? We went through so much to get here, and now it turns out he was pulling our strings this whole time? Yeah, it's about time we finished this. I don't want to feel this way ever again. There's a path we can take now. I sense Adachi's presence from that direction. He's taunting us. Bring it on! Let's go kick his ass right now! Wait, I suggest we prepare ourselves first. We can't let him stab us in the back ever again. We must face him with all the power at our disposal and defeat him without fail. I'm a little worried what he means by the end of the year, but now's not the time to freak out. Let's get prepared. Let's get over prepared and leave footprints all over his stupid smug face. Senpai, please don't go on alone. I understand that it must hurt, since you seem to have a personal relationship with him. Maybe that's why. I feel a presence kind of like yours up ahead. He might be calling to you. Wait, never mind. Forget I said that. We're all going together, okay? Promise us. <laughs> 